So, My Little Pony, the movie. It's not often that there comes a movie that I see it and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to be seeing that. I mean, I mean, there are a lot of movies like that. Like, I'm definitely going to go see Blade Runner. But, as a brony through and through, part of the brony community, when I saw the news that this was going to be made, like this new movie is going to be made, you wouldn't believe how excited I was. Because, oh my god, we, I mean, yeah, we got what, four Crusher Girls movies, and, like, they're fine. I mean, Rainbow Rocks is really good. But, a, an actual theatrical release? Set in a question? Dude. I'm there. And now, the film is out. And I mentioned on Twitter, I went into this movie not knowing anything about the plot... Other than what we saw in the trailers, I didn't look at critic reviews. I didn't even see what other bronies in the community uh, were thinking about the movie. Because some of them have already seen the movie before me. I went, I went into this as fresh as I could. And now that I've seen it, well, it's good. It's not great. But you know what? I wasn't expecting it to be great. I mean, it's their first really big theatrical release. I didn't, it didn't have to be great. I just wanted it to be good. And it was good. So, so let's talk about the plot. Uh, the plot is, it can be summed up like this. Uh, the main tits are having a festival. Uh, the main bad guys show up, who are commanded by the Storm King. Uh, we meet Tempest Shadow for the first time. She's voiced by Emily Blunt. Now, she's really good as, as Tempest Shadow. Uh... The Storm King armies, sorry, the Storm King's armies, excuse me, uh, they, they crash the festival and basically enslave, enslave everybody. And all, and the other princesses are trapped in stone. And now the main sets have to go find a way to, you know, stop the Storm King. They go, they go outside of Equestria, meet, you know, colorful cast of characters. See see what they can do to, to save the day. That's basically the plot. It's really simple. And it didn't have to be complicated. It just had to be simple. And that's and like that's what we got. And I'm fine with that. Um, now, like I said, I mentioned Emily Blunt is really good as Tempest Shadow. Every, everybody's really good in this movie. Like, they're all at the top of their game. All of them. Um, now, this is, of course, a musical, um, and once again, Daniel Ingram is in charge of the music, uh, he did the score, and considering he had access to an orchestra this time, and, like, the actual music is phenomenal. Like, mm, right, like, right there. Like, some of his, some of his actual best music that he's ever done. As for the songs themselves... They're fine. I mean, I enjoy them enough. But it's like, but outside of the actual the actual musical score, of the songs. I mean, like they're all right. I wouldn't put them, like I'd put them, like around his season one work. Maybe season season two at the very best. Um. Now, now this was not now this was not done in flash animation like this movie. It was in animated in flash. They use a new program called Toon Boom. I think that's what it's called. Um, I don't know if that's flash based. It seems like it, and it's great. It is great. It, it translates the flash animation to more high quality animation for the big screen, and it looks phenomenal. Um. I think the only really problem I have with the animation is uh, take Diggs' character, the the cat. He looks like, he looks like he's from a different movie. Like like you put him like in the frames where he's like next to the main six, like 
they look like you put them together. They look so different. Like I don't know what was up. I don't know what was up with that. I think it's like the lines around his model. They look, they're so pronounced. I, I don't know. Um, the Atla. Uh, let's see. Well, I can. Hmm. I can talk about the new characters in this movie. Um, aside from Tate Diggs' character, he like he's fine. Uh, yeah, Christian Chenoweth as. Princess uh, Sky something. I can't remember her name. She's fine. She's all peppy and bubbly. Kind of like uh, Pinkie Pie is. And they become good friends. Um, actually, there's not a whole lot of new... There's actually not a whole lot of new characters. Speaking of characters, one thing I was worried about what they were going to do is... Like the, like, the show's got a whole lot of characters. So many. And I was like, oh, God, oh, are they going to, like, like introduce all these characters and they're not doing anything with them? Or, like, you can have all these characters and you have to, you know, go through who, all who they are. And, like, that's going to take up too much time and nobody cares. We're here for, like, the main six. Anybody seeing this movie is here for the main six. And I was worried, like, like Starlight Glimmer is part of the show now. She's one. She's part of the main cast. And I was like, "Oh God, they're gonna talk. They're gonna have to introduce her. Like, oh, I'm. I'm gonna explain what your character is. No, they didn't do that. In fact, basically every side character, every single one is just relegated to the background, and they don't get any lines. Which honestly, that was for the best. Considering this is a theatrical release, not everybody who is going to go see this movie has watched the show. I mean, mostly it's going to be, like, maybe bronies, some bringing some of their friends along who have may, have not watched the show. And, you know, kids bringing their parents, and those parents have not watched the show. Or if they have, they haven't paid attention. So keeping it simple like that, just having your main characters and these new characters in the movie, that was for the best. Um, and speaking further about these new characters here's one thing I'm really wondering um now that we have all these characters that are introduced into the movie what's that gonna mean for the show cause I don't know if they're gonna bring them in to the mo to the show my best guess is they'll never be mentioned again and I base this off of Sunset Shimmer. She's introduced in Equestria Girls, and she is only ever in any of the Equestria Girls movies. And the show, she's never brought up. And you know what? Maybe they should just keep it that way. I mean, I don't, I don't mind these characters at all. I mean, if they come back in some form or another, I'd be fine with that. I like them just fine. Get to know them more. I don't have a problem with that. But if they don't, that's fine, and I understand. And speaking of bringing them back, I think the only way they would be brought back in some kind of fashion is a sequel. Now, like I said, I like this movie. But with a sequel, like, well, let me, hmm. Well, like I said, I like this movie. Um... And, you know, simple plot, songs are fine, blah, 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 all that. Now that you've established places outside of Equestria and these new characters, I wonder how you could use them for a sequel. And I don't know if this is going to get a sequel. I would be very happy if it does, but I don't know if it will. And that would depend entirely on how well the movie does at the box office compared to its budget. And to be honest, I don't know how well it'll do, but I'm guessing not very well. I mean, it came out the same weekend as the new Blade Runner. I mean, granted, that's better than when it was originally going to come out, which would have been alongside Thor Ragnarok, which, I mean, that would have sunk this movie if that had happened. I mean, 
It's, I mean, it's not great, but it's better than what it than what it would have been. Um, and then, of course, it's also going up against some Idris Elba and Kate Winslet movie. What is it called? The Mountain Between Us. It's doing worse than that movie. So I don't know what's going. I don't know what the box office receipts for this movie are going to be, but hopefully they're enough for us to get a sequel. Because I liked this movie. But but with a sequel, I would expect I would like to see them do more. Give us a more in, a more interesting plot. Give us some better songs, stuff like that. I don't know. So with all that being said, my summary of My Little Pony the movie is one: the plot is fine. It's it's serviceable. It didn't have to. It, had, it didn't have to be that great, but it did what it needed to do. Two, the songs are fine. I mean, they're not Daniel Ingram's best work. The musical score is is amazing, but the actual songs themselves are fine. They do their job just fine. But they're not. But again, they're not his best work. Three, performances were all great. Everybody in the main six was great, and all of these celebrity voices did great. And four, animation was was great. And I, I hope they, if they make a sequel, that I want them to use this Tomb Boom stuff again. Because it, 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 it's, it's great looking. And it does a great job of translating, you know, the show's animation to the big screen. So overall, I give my final score of the movie a seven and a half out of ten. It's good, but not great, and that's fine by me. I've been Mr. Ronos. I'll see you guys next time.